All right, good morning. Let's go ahead and turn this little cute faceted prenite. It's about uh, eight millimeter by six or seven, and we'll turn it into a ring. I'm using 16 inches of 18 gauge round copper wire. You can use any wire you want. And I'm gonna find the approximate middle of it. And I'm gonna take my flat nose pliers and I'm gonna grip the approximate middle of this wire. Put my thumb above and be uh, below and my finger above and just turn, whoop, just turn this wire so that you get the shape of an S and keep it flat. You can use the pliers um, to help you keep turning and we'll make a little S around, I mean a, a little circle around this S. And my gemstone's oval, so I'm gonna try to make it more oval than, than circle. So I've put, you know, one end a little bit longer here. Okay, and when you're ready, uh, the wires should be opposite each other. And you'll make sure that your cup is flat. And then just raise these arms slightly. Just like that. So that you have a little cup that you can set your gemstone in. Now this is a little bit big. Um, so I'm gonna snuggle the wire up down here a little closer to my gem. And all I'm gonna do is just use my finger to do that. It's a little squirrely, I'm not gonna lie. And this is a bigger wire, so if you need to, and I might, you can use your plier the most gentle squeeze and just get the wire so that it edge, edges your gemstone on both sides just like that and it should be sitting flat on that S curve all right and the arms are up slightly hold everything real tight between your finger and your thumb and kind of jackknife uh, you know this back and forth action it's big wire on a small gemstone so just work patiently. When you meet the other wire, grab it and turn it, moving inward and upward slightly on your gemstone. And you have to go all the way up until you catch the upper shoulder of the gem. So one more time, and I've got some little gaps there, so I'm going to just do like that and get a little closer. I'm keeping a lot of pressure in the gemstone flat. Okay, almost there. And I'm going to stop right here on the side because I want my gem to sit this way for the ring. Okay. Once you get up above the shoulders of the gemstone, You'll see it's pretty locked in, okay? And this wire's thick against that small thing, so you won't, uh, you won't have to worry about it slipping out. So my wires are going opposite each other. I'm gonna get to the approximate middle over here and over here. It doesn't have to be the exact middle. And you can turn your wire out slightly, but make sure you don't lose the top of that gem. You're over the shoulders. I'll get my plier on it. I'm gonna make this bend. I'm gonna hold everything right here and bend it straight down the side of the cup, 90 degree. Okay, turn it over. Do the same thing. I'm just gonna give a little outward bend so I can get it. This thick wire. Hold the edge of the, I'm gonna be just, you know, just off the cup because when I turn, it's gonna have some bulk and don't let anything shift, just turn. Okay, 90 degrees straight down. That's a nice hearty ring top. 
So I'll turn it over. There's a 90 degree bend and a 90 degree bend. So I'm going to bring these two wires. This one's a little bit not in the center, but that's okay. I'm going to bring these two down right across the bottom of the cup. And just inside those 90 degree bends. Okay, so that they go to each side of those. If you need to fiddle it with your fingers a little bit, you can. You should have just a whisper of a gap underneath that cup. Try not to have any lumps there. Just try to make it kind of nice and straight. Okay, we're going to wrap that in a second. But that's your capture. And now you have quite a bit of wire on each side um, on 18 gauge round to make this ring. Alright, so I'm going to get about 6 inches of 22 gauge half round wire. it straight with your fingers. Put the half uh, round flat side of it looking at you, so facing up. Slip underneath these two wires, but not into the coil. Center your half round, hold on to one side of it, and then with the other one, wrap these two wires a couple of good times. Use your pliers if you need to help you pull it tight, just like that, and then turn it to the other side and make a couple of wraps. Try to get close to the edge of the cup. You can wrap all the way if you want to. I might do another one over here just to make the whole thing banded. And that's about good. So you have a piece of half round on each side of this ring. Just leave them there for a minute, okay? So now let's get our ring mandrel out. And you're going to go down here and find the size of your ring mandrel. You can barely, uh, of your ring, you can barely see. Mine's six, seven, eight right here. And whatever works. You could do this also with a big Sharpie marker if you don't have a mandrel. Um, you know, the end of a screwdriver, etc. Okay, so you'll just hold, try to show you this best that I can, hold your gem on the size that you want, bend these two wires back, cross them onto the mandrel. And you can fiddle them to get a little closer to the size. When we hammer it, it's going to grow a little bit. So I'm going to hold it tight right there and um, as even as you can around this mandrel. And just bring the wires up. If I were not under the camera, this would be easier. The mandrel could be snuggled into your lap. Okay, so you got two pieces of half round here ready. Um, stand them up and then lay these wires. You know, you might have to bend it out slightly to snuggle it underneath there. Okay. Try to get just some more. <laughs> Gonna turn it upside down. Just get your half round up 
and snuggle under the gemstone with this with this wire. Whew, okay. So I'm letting it go because I can show you. Then I'll have to cinch it back up here again. So just look at your mandrel. Pull your ring tight. You can even slope these two wires down slightly to help you um, shape it. You know, all the way up here on the size smaller because it's going to want to spring open. You want to have it a lot smaller so that, you know, down here is actually where I want to be and you won't fight so much with it. Okay, so even though I wanted a size 6, I'm going to come up here to a size 5 and cause the spring tension. Um, so that my shank, when I grow it, you know, so right about there, okay? 6 and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 5 and 3 quarter or 5 and a half so that when I hammer it, it'll become a six. If you feel like you need to tape it, you can tape it or you can put a little Sharpie marker so that you know uh, how your size, if your size changed or not while you're working. I like to just put a little piece of tape on it. So once I get it there, just go like this on the bottom of your shank. help you a little bit. It might go out of shape and that's okay while we work because we're going to hammer it. We're going to reshape it. So just don't worry so much about it. Just help you keep it in place. All right. So you want to make sure your gemstone's nice. Um, these two wires you can get ready to work with. Obviously we're going to catch these last open coil links with this. You don't have to though. The other thing you can do is bend it around the shank and back over. Um, it's super thick wire so I kind of don't want to cause that bulk there so I'm going to do it with the existing half round that's here. I'm going to weave just one or two stitches through here with this half round. So you'll take the half round. It's already going in a certain direction. The flat side's already on the frame. So to weave it, I'm going to first, so I've got one on each side, so I'm concerned with, with these two on this side and those two using that one. Okay, so first I'm going to get around both of them here with a loop. You don't have to, you know, pull it super tight. Then I'm going to get one more around. You have to pass through and then come back. Just don't let the half round turn over. You can use your pliers to help you make it tight right there. Just those two so I've grabbed them. Just leave your half round living there for a second. So now you can turn to this side. Same thing. I've got a half round already living here. So I'm just going to grab these two. With two wraps. Okay, you can use your plier and help you tap all that if you need to. Make sure you got two nice tight loops. Oh, don't let it slide up the ring. Just right there. So we're still at the bottom of the cup with it, just like that. And then you have these two nice wire extensions to do whatever you want with. Um, you know, I can go through and like weave this whole ring. I could go through, I could have made these longer and, and band, you know, banded all of that shank together. Okay, but I'm not going to. So, um, I've capped the wires here and here. I'm going to leave the half round. 
on there and I've got design available to me if I want it. So I'm going to hold everything steady. It's thick wire so doing it with your finger might not be the best idea or if you want to do it with your hands I advise you go back onto the ring uh, mandrel so that um, you know you don't change the size of it too much as you pull these. Alright so you'll hold everything steady and you can make this one is coming from this this side of the ring so I'm gonna make a 90 degree bend and go that way okay holding everything steady and as close and underneath to the ring as I can get I'm gonna make a bend and just let your half round come from underneath it Oop, I might have gone the wrong way with my half round yeah I did just let your half round kind of be here above it make a clean turn right there okay flip over Do the same thing, just get your half round up here and out of the way. Hold your ring on its size. See, I've grown already to seven. I'm gonna take this wire and just pull it tight again while the other one is, you know, stretched forward so I can get back to my size. The tape isn't so tight that it's going to keep it from pulling, so. Okay. When you get it tight, hold it with the bottom of your finger there, and like I said, take it right here and just, you know, not, you, you can't be too close because then you won't be able to turn it, but try to get a nice close turn right there at the edge of your ring just like that okay okay I'm gonna take this off so you can see what we've been doing okay so you got this nice turn at the bottom of the cup and now you can use these for design okay your your stones in there the ring shanks locked at this size here so and there's no bulk underneath your finger so now I can go do design with these if I want to um, I'm gonna you know just fan it out a little bit if I didn't want to do design I would cut it and I would bury the end right there in in between the shank and the bottom of the cup okay and that locks all this ring together so but if you want to do design you can you know turn a little spiral outward here like that switch over do the same on this side just hold the bottom and the top use the pad of your finger if you need to but this wire is pretty pretty big so it should turn gracefully and make it to the other side now if I want to coil, if I want to use these half rounds to make design, I can do that. Um, I should have probably just cut this off and I'm probably just going to cut this off up here. You cut yours off if you're watching this ahead before you do this. Bury it in there. Okay. Same thing here, I'll just cut it off. But if, if you want to do, you know, coiling, I could use it. Actually, I'll just show you on just this one. The other one wasn't long enough but I got a little half round here so you know for some texture and also to help me just grab and land that coil if I uh, land that frame wire there if I need it yeah just do some Just work to keep your half round uh, flat side against the frame. This could also be 28 gauge. You know, I could be tying bead balls onto this thing if I wanted to be doing that right now. Just some ideas for you. 
this isn't going to make it all the way around, so I'll just nip it right here. But you get the idea. You could do some texture on that wire. And I'll just push it back a little bit. So, you see, I could have gone all the way if I want to. But anyway, come back, you know, around to this side. And make it as close or as far away as you want to give your ring some, some depth and and some design. If you wanted to, you could flare it out a bit, bring it to meet this one, and then let's uh, make something cute over here, just like that. Bring this other one in a little bit more, I think. Give some more grace to this one. Okay, just like that. And I have a landing pad here for some curl. Um, I could come around the shank. Okay. So, and I, I can weave that a little bit if I want to. You know, you get the idea. Or I can just make it a clean, you know, open turn, open design. Okay. So, to end these over here, um, You know, it's pretty tough and you don't really need to do a whole lot to lock it. Um, but if you feel like you need to, you can, you know, terminate these wires. A lot of folks will come through the shank here. Make sure you hold everything steady at your curves. It's big wire, so it's a little bit tough. Okay, just come in, get your plier on the inside one. Help you close it up right here at the ring, at the shank. Okay. And then now go past this next one up and uh, go ahead and, you know, while before we cut anything. Okay, right, right beside it. Hold everything steady. Make the turn. This one is short. So don't let your, your nice curve disappear when you go in here. Now get, you know, underneath and to the right of the first wire, okay, so that they lay next to each other nicely. You see what I'm saying? Whoop. This could be done with 20 gauge also. Careful you don't scratch the top of that wire. So just like that. Every time you pass underneath the shank, you're going to decrease the size of the ring slightly with this bulk. And it's okay because we're going to hammer it out and that increases the, the size of the ring slightly. So, but you, you just want to keep that in mind as you do these things. So I'm holding this so that I can bring my wire back around and not have my curls uh, move too much and I'm going to bring them back around in the order that they pass through, right? So to eliminate bulk and keep them nicely side by side. You can use your plier and help you tap it a little bit. Tap it a little bit. Ooh, it's getting tight and hard, crunchy here. Okay, so I'm not going to do too much more. It's a nice, cute design. I can trim it and land a little loop right there, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just holding everything. Turn my curve. Snip the bit. Get my round nose on it. Uh, stubby round nose or a thick round nose, but this is thick wire, so you don't want your really super fine round nose on it. Won't bend the wire. Or you can get your bent nose on it. I'm trying to turn it so you can see it. And if you need to sacrifice the tip because you need to grip real hard, do that. And turn a tight little spiral. Try to dive that tip, you know, towards the inside there. Okay. 
just like that. If you munched that tip, you can get your snips right in there and just take the very, very tip of it out. And now bring this one. It's, you know, tight and crunchy, so, and hard wire. Bring it around up here. Just kind of echo, you know, the curve of that guy. But this time we're going to make it come to the top of the cup here, if you can. And bring it out this other direction. Okay, and I'm just going to land the slightest little curl right there. I'm going to trim away this super hard end. Maybe a little more. Ooh. Okay, and this time I'm going to use um, time I'm going to use my fine flat nose. I could also be using my bent nose for this. Just grip the very tip, okay? Hold on to all this pretty. Lift up slightly because you want some, some leverage and turn that tip back onto itself. Oh. I kind of have to get above it and push it in. Before I push it in though, I've got that munchy little bit because I grabbed it. So I'm going to take my plier, my uh, cutter, my very fine cutter, put your thumb here so that shard doesn't get at you. Snip that very crunchy tip out. And now finish this little spiral into a super tight closed loop. Okay, and now lay it back down elegantly. Get a little wider plier so you don't scratch or just be careful and turn that little cutie out and make it lay whoop, on the edge of your ring. Okay, so cute. All right, Whew, everybody breathe. Okay, get your mandrel back out. Slide the ring back on. Come back down to your intended size. It might be a slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Mine's probably going to be a little bit bigger than I intended. And before you hammer anything, do what I call leveling out the ring. Come up and look on top of it. And push these coils and level it out. Okay? So that it'll sit nicely against the finger. Push it all down. Okay, great job. This ring in the end, see I'm at five and three quarter, just where I said I was going to be. And then when I hammer it, it's probably going to go to six or six and a quarter here. Okay, so you don't want to hammer the gemstone elements, certainly. So I like to just get, um, let me get my, if you have a rubber mallet, you know, a small rubber mallet, it's best. Where's my Old Faithful? Well, you don't see her. I'm just going to use a little hammer. Um, you can use, you know, your chasing hammer, but I use the little one so that I can get into this edge right here. And you're not looking to smash it. You're looking just to... You can even go to the side of it. Um, so I'm going to tap that edge. I'm going to go over here and tap this edge. I'm going to settle my ring. Okay, and then I'm just going to you know, if you have a rubber mallet, it's better. You see the, the ring is already growing just because of those two edges I did. And, you know, this is a tapered mandrel, so this wire is going to be, you know, hammered on a shorter length than this side of the wire. So you'll do a few taps on each side and then come to the middle. I like to tap, you know, towards...
towards um, the gemstone from the bottom center. And then you can turn it over, lift it out, turn the ring over, come back down to the size. And again, I'm not smashing it. I'm just doing gentle tapping. And now just give another hammer. And we're doing this because um, to level out the wires, the mandrel, my mandrel is slanted. Okay, that hardens the shank up. I didn't leave any marks on my wire. Um, I can band that if I want to, but I like a nice clean band. And then that's a nice, clean, beautiful ring, size six and one quarter for your finger. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a nice, simple ring, scratchless on the inside, and we're going to call it the Midway Station Ring. Ring design number one, pre-night. Okay, I'm going to give you another one in a little bit. So I'm going to use some 26 gauge wire um, for some texture. I'm going to add some things to this pre-night. And I'll just anchor it um, right here at the base of this frame wire. So I'm going to pass about five inches through. I've got 12 inches of 26 gauge and I'm going to do something with this this half is why um, maybe five inches and then right here along here I'll just anchor it by making a couple of coils 26 gauge is similar to 28 but it is a little bit thicker so it's fun for a different texture and it's great to tie bead balls on with so there's two All right, so I'll just, I slipped in, you know, a little copper bead. These could be gemstone beads if you want. I made three extra little wraps. I'm going to grab another little bead. Slip it down there. The holes in these beads are a little bigger than I want them, but that's okay. I'm sure you'll, yours will be great. I'll just tie them in there like that. Whoop! Dove it in there. Didn't fit. It's okay. I'll send it out and get a different bead. A little bit bigger. And these are different from each other, but you get the idea about how you can embellish your ring. Well, slipped in between the shank by accident, so I'm just going to slip back out. Make a few wraps and tie this onto here. Probably going to slip another one, another bead in there, just because I got the space for it on my ring. And as you weave, you know, and attach embellishments back towards the shank, if you feel like you need to grip it, you can do that, you know, with the loop of this wire too. So let me get another one, a little bit smaller like the first one. All of my copper beads are a different brand here. 
So I just went smaller again because my space decreased. And I'm going to come through here, land my bead, and you have to turn them so that, you know, you don't see the little ends sometimes as you're sewing them in here best that you can. Oh, fell through. Push it back out. Okay. And then while I'm here, I am actually going to catch the shank and tie this element down as I make a couple of laps. I'm going to take two around to tie this ball on. And then on the third one, I'm going to pass below the shank, through the shank, to catch it. Okay. I'll just come back over here like nothing ever happened and continue. I'll slip my wire back underneath so I can't see that tie. And then I have room for another little tiny one. If you have a little tiny one, I might. Or not, whatever you want to do. Like I said, this would be really pretty if those were gemstones. Gemstone beads too. So I got room for another one. I put a one millimeter here just for fun. And I'll make a couple of coils around this guy. And just for texture, I could keep going if I want to. That's cute. So I'll just keep going just for texture. Tie these two together all the way around. Make a coil. This over here, I'm just, I'm still leaving here for a minute. I could have, you know, tied some um, one millimeters down there if I want to, is why that's there. If you don't, you cut it off. Or maybe this, this one was long enough that I could have made it over here and tied some more on if I want to. After a few, give a little tap, you know, work yours the way you want it. That's going to be so cute, such a pretty ring.
And you can just do this to your liking. I'm probably going to do a few till I get to the edge of this. It's getting tight to get in there now. Yeah, I missed that last one. Probably just snip it out right there. I messed up that last coil, so I just snipped it out. You know, you don't want anything on the finger, so when you cut this one, you know, it's almost better to try to leave it up here somewhere if you can cut it deep. If you can't cut it deep, Come from underneath here and cut it so that it's long enough that the tip is going into that crevice and not onto the finger that it can't slide off this coil. Just like that. And bury it to the inside. Okay, way in there. So it's not on the finger at all. So you get the idea spread mine out a little bit. And then I have this, you know, leading one over here that I could, you know, continue if I wanted to do a few more in there or I could weave weave these two up or I could wrap some texture, you know, onto this one or I could cut it off or I could add bead balls down there, you know, all kinds of stuff. For me, for this one, I think I'm probably just going to cut it off. Actually, I might Let's do two wraps around these two looped elements. So I want to tie these two together. So I'll just make sure there's no bubble in there. And I just want two discrete little wraps. Well, that just broke. And if that happens, that's okay. Let's see if I can get one out of it. No, it's probably going to be too short. But you get the idea. You could have wrapped one there if you needed it. I'm probably now just going to end this wire in here since it broke and I don't really need it. Try to get in there and cut it the best that you can. Don't cut any other wire off. And then just try to tap that cut end down. It's living between these spirals. Okay. If I still feel like I need to tie them, I can just get an independent piece of wire. Make a couple of wraps around both these coils around both these wires. And then you can take, you know, you can make a couple wraps around this single one here to lock it. And again, this is optional. These wires are 18 gauge, so it's probably thick enough that it would actually stay without this tie, but I show it to you in case if you're using 20 gauge, that might not stay without a tie. It's a little thinner wire. I'll make three wraps and then I'll just end it. Tuck the cut underneath. Same with this side, do a couple of single wraps just to make it look nice on the design if you can get it.
and I'll just cut it right there and tuck that second coil in. Okay, beautiful little ring. And again, I probably would have chosen bead balls that the holes weren't so big, but this is all I got. You get the idea. You just face the holes inward. Tap these right here. Don't break your wire, but just tap them if you need to. Okay, so there's that one. So pretty. Mm -hmm. Still scratchless. And completely clean on the inside.